So um, you're dealing, of course, with a tremendous uh, propaganda campaign, mass hysteria. The prestitutes are all uh, oh, mobilized. Absolutely. One of the things that's happening that I should mention, and maybe we talk about it in some more detail, is there's also there's a, a mass defection of these journalists at Russia Today. And uh, I, I haven't been on Russia Today for a year and a half, mm -hmm. two years. And in the meantime, they've loaded up with these left liberal uh, gatekeeper types. And in particular, they had uh, Abby Martin, who she says she was once a 9-11 truth activist. I, I know she was invited to the 9-11 Truth Conference here in Washington last September. Uh -huh. They were going to give her a prize, believe it or not, and she refused to come. So I think her her independent thinking is in the past. Anyway, a prize for what? Narcissism? No, no, for 9-11 for uh, Truth, uh, because she made some oblique references. It was a wretched yeah. gesture to begin with, and then she, she scorned it. So that, that was a double uh, mm -hmm. whammy from her. But she gets on, on television yesterday, on the uh, or Monday, and says, I, I think what Russia is doing is wrong. Abby Martin needs to remember that if we need anti-Russian, anti-Putin slanders to dissect and refute, we can get those from NBC, ABC, PBS, uh, CBS. We can get those on all of the U.S. corporate media. Then Russia today really ought to provide some kind of an antidote, right? Some kind of a, of a differing view. You would think. You'd think, but not Abby Martin. She, her, she, I think she's bidding for, um, for something else. She was just on, I think she got on Anderson Cooper this afternoon, but for sure she was just on, on Piers Morgan on CNN. The cadaver. Who, of course, is himself on his way out. Yeah. And she said that her, her moral compass required her to speak up uh, against, uh, the Russian uh, actions. I would urge her to study the problem of fascism and what what it what it means to have a fascist state and an mm -hmm. aggressive one in the middle of Europe as a NATO puppet, uh, and and think about what that means and try to readjust her moral moral compass. Uh, the other thing is another one of these commentators on Russia Today, Liz Wall, W A H L. She quit simply quit on the air. Uh -huh. And that got her uh, an invitation to Piers Morgan and, and CNN. And I'm afraid that this is the, the consequence of, of a, a misguided hiring policy at Russia Today. Which well, I think to, I, you're right. The chickens are coming home. Uh, no question. Did, she, did Martin quit or is she still employed? She's still there, but I, I can't imagine how she can remain. I mean, this is, the, 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 this is up to this uh, Margarita Simonyan, who is the boss of Russia Today. Mm -hmm. And her, her line has essentially been to tail after Ron Paul, to tail after Assange, to tail after Snowden, mm -hmm. things like this. And what do we find now? Uh, Assange, of course, used his program on RT to argue that he, he had Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah, on his mm -hmm. program. And he tried to convince Nasrallah to dump the Syrian uh, government, in other words, to turn against Assad. This was an amazing thing to see hmm. in that broadcast. And mm -hmm. then with Snowden, uh, we've just had Snowden's principal scribe, Glenn Greenwald, uh, of course, now with Jeremy Scahill working for this right. Pierre right, Omidyar, right. Mm -hmm. and thanks to a, to a, uh, an, a website called uh, Panda, I think, they're, they're exposed, uh, this Omidyar is exposed as having funded the uh, the Kiev opposition, in other words, the the groups that carried out the putsch, uh, to the tune of more than half a million dollars, and and mm -hmm. Greenwald is very huffy, right? He says, "How dare you associate me with this guy just because he is now the guy who pays my bills?" And Scahill is the same thing, right? These mm -hmm. these are the typical left liberal gatekeepers, yeah, 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 and yeah. the the problem with Russia today is they've got to get away from the policy of giving over their airtime to people who hate Russia, because there's no other way to put it. In other so words, Abby, it's, Abby, it's Martin not sh there. Abby Martin showed her, her true colors, is what you're saying. I'm afraid so. And th okay. there's also a guy called Sam Sachs. I wonder what he's going to do. Uh, uh, he's one of their commentators also. Now that, no. that, that, that Wall has quit and Abby has, has attacked Russia, he's, he's, well, he says see. he supports Abby. Sam, <laughs> Sam Sack? Uh, well, Pardon me? His name is Sam Sack. <laughs> yes, Sam, 
Sam Sachs is Well, the guy. Sam is going to be sacked. Uh, Abby Martin... I don't I, know. That would be... That would be I think healthy, but uh, I'm not at all sure. They need to clean house. Here, let me say one thing. We're going to take a break here, get a drink of water. Uh, look, uh, Abby Martin, if any of you have seen her, is r- rather consumed with her appearance, shall we say. And I must also say, Webster, as a journalist, uh, she is without question dire, uh, direly in need of going to some kind of vocal coach to learn how to read. The woman does not know how to read a sentence, cannot accentuate and emphasize the right words or phrases within a paragraph. Uh, it's like a car wreck. I, I'm just stunned. I thought English was her second language for a while. So, at any rate, uh, she's a glamour star and a celeb, and, and that's she's made, and she'll have no trouble getting a job somewhere else. It just looked to me like another rocket to stardom for a But in the meantime... Life. Russia today really ought to present a, a differing view. This, they need to view. clean house. I think so. I agree. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, back with Webster. Uh, you know, I should, if if you don't mind, Webster, let me just play this. It's a minute long, uh, the, the Abby Martin rant uh, from her heart, because a lot of people didn't hear it, and, and they probably should hear it. But if you've ever seen Abby Martin, you know that uh, she's a, a fashion plate and, and obviously very much taken with herself. And unfortunately, doesn't know how to read. Uh, one of the most clumsy readers I've ever seen. Now, that doesn't mean she can't improve herself, and I hope she does. Because she's representing a, a profession, our profession, that does require at least a modicum of competence. And, and she could certainly do better. Here's her comment. From my heart about the ongoing political crisis in Ukraine and Russia's military occupation of Crimea. Just because I work here for RT doesn't mean... I don't have editorial independence, and I can't stress enough how strongly I am against any state intervention in a sovereign nation's affairs. What Russia did is wrong. I admittedly don't know as much as I should about Ukraine's history or the cultural dynamics of the region, but what I do know is that military intervention is never the answer, and I will not sit here and apologize or defend military aggression. Furthermore, the coverage I've seen of Ukraine has been truly disappointing from all sides of the media spectrum and rife with disinformation. Above all, my heart goes out to the Ukrainian people, who are now wedged as pawns in the middle of a global power chess game. They're the real losers here. All we can do now is hope for a peaceful outcome for a terrible situation and prevent another full-blown Cold War between multiple superpowers. Until then, I'll keep telling the truth as I see it. Have a good night, everyone. I'll see you back here to break the set tomorrow. Oh, boy, she's... She's something else. And, and look, uh, what, what I think is missing from this yeah. self-righteousness is... is totally. You, you notice what she's got is moral equivalence. Now, moral equivalence, she says, Putin is bad, U.S. bad, everybody bad, Ukrainian people good. I don't know why they would be good in, in such a world. But what she's missing is this problem of who's the aggressor, who's acting defensively, who's acting offensively. She missed the whole the story. Aggressor is clearly the United States and NATO, because this is the USAID has pumped in $5 million or so to fund these fascist groups. Kerry is now talking about $1 billion more of our money Correct. when we're cutting food stamps to fund this bunch of fascist cliquists there in, uh, thugs. in Kiev, thugs. And uh, the, the fact that Putin is, is trying to, uh, to protect Russia from uh, Ukraine joining NATO and then becoming the the uh, spear point of some kind of an assault uh, in various terms on Russia, a breakup of Russia. It's what we talked about five years ago, the Brzezinski plan, right? Exactly the, uh, right. The breakup yeah, of the Russian is. Federation That's... in the same way that the USSR That's... had been had been broken up. And yeah. it's not there's not clear cut at all. And I think anybody reasonable would actually have to say, well, the Crimea with all those Russians and the fact that they have rented the bases there for another 30 years, and the similar situation in Kharkov, this big industrial city along the Russian border, and uh, the uh, Donetsk, this entire Donetsk-Donbass area, one of the most highly industrialized in the world, and this is actually where the economic value of Ukraine comes from, from coal mining and steel mills in that area, it is not so obvious that um, 20 or 30,000 extremists in a public square blown out of all proportion by the Western media and then helped along by, by NATO and, and these uh, foreign ministers who were right. there, 
not so clear that they ought to be allowed to seize the government. Simply, as we hear from Kerry, uh, because y- Yanukovych left his post. In other words, he, went, he left the country because he feared assassination, and the police had uh, had had uh, he, deserted he was, him. He was threatened. Yeah, he was threatened. Now, part of this is his problem is that he's he's Mr. Chicken Kiev. There's no way around it. He needed to crack down. He didn't do it, and therefore the police were getting tired of having their lives lost the because he yeah. wouldn't let them have weapons. He sent them out disarmed. When you, if you saw his his post coup press conference there from Rostov on Don, yeah. he says, "I admire the police because they stood there with no guns." Well, why didn't they have guns? <laughs> because of him. Yeah. He said, "No guns for yeah. you," uh, because he was afraid of the Western media. Or some kind of backlash, and now he realizes he should have feared something else. He needed to build on his security forces, and he needed to build on the Russian population, but he he couldn't uh, figure that out. But be that as it may, he, as Putin says, he's corrupt, he's a failure, he's chicken Kiev, but he's actually the president of the country. And according to uh, to Kerry's logic, the next time Obama leaves Washington, then a coup d'état would be perfectly legitimate, right? Because you could say he deserted his post, right? He went to Hawaii on a vacation, or he went, you know, out of the country. Yeah, your point is well taken. Whatever it is. Uh, absolutely. But look, yeah. what I would suggest, um, what we can do here tonight in, in the allotted time, I think, is to try to stress some points that you're not likely to hear uh, anywhere else, okay? That, let, let me just try to go through some. Go to I, it. I, I've yeah. been trying to develop a, a kind of a, a short course, right, a half-hour or forty-minute course in in what you really need to know about this, because there are certain key points that are that are not stressed. If I might say one thing before you yeah. start, this woman is representative of uh, of uh, again a profession that has lost its way. She is clueless, clueless about what happened over there, who did what, who was behind what, where the money came from. I can't even imagine being that vapid when it comes to such an important <laughs> story. Uh, but there it is. Go ahead. I, I I think there's there's a lot to that, Jeff. And and you notice that they offered to send her over there for fact finding. In other words, they said, oh, "Look, we'll, right. we'll we'll send you to Crimea right. and Ukraine, and you can report on the spot." And she doesn't want to do that. She so she she admits she doesn't know, and then that she doesn't want to know. And I, I'm really sorry. I've been on that program a couple of times. It, it's yeah. not like she's you know uh, a hopeless case from the very beginning. But yeah. somehow yeah. she also the power finish. the power of this left, left liberal human rights world is, yeah, is yeah. overwhelming. It is. She also could not pronounce uh, Crimea. <laughs> she knows that. She's not close. Uh, I've, I've noticed, I, uh, I she, like the English language like you do. I like words to be used properly. I like a good read. You know, if you read, they all read. We understand that. But this woman needs a course. Yeah, I, I actually reading. noticed in the course of that statement that, uh, that she was actually halting at certain key points. 